office from the king. If you vouchsafe my hearing and respect. Welcome, Sir Walter Blunt. Would to God you were of our determination. Some of us love you well. And even though some envy your great deservings and good name, because you're not of our quality, but stand against us like an enemy. And God defend, but still as you stand so. So out of limit and true rule, you stand against anointed majesty. Good. But to my charge, the king hath sent to know the nature of your griefs, and whereupon you conjure from the breast of civil peace such bold hostility, teaching his duteous land audacious cruelty. If that the king have any way, your good deserves for God. Oh, oh, oh. Which he confesseth to be manifold. He bids you name your griefs, and with all speed you shall have your desires. With interest and pardon absolute for yourself and these herein misled by your suggestion. Misled? The king is kind. And well we know the king knows at what time to promise when to pay. My father and my uncle and myself did give him that same royalty he wears, and when he was not six and twenty strong. A poor, unminded outlaw sneaking home, my father gave him welcome to the shore. And when he heard him swear and vow to God, he came up to be Duke of Lancaster, pursue his livery and beg his peace with tears of innocency and turns of zeal, my father, in kind heart and pity moved, swore him assistance and performed it too. Now, when the lords and barons of the realm perceived Northumberland did lead to him, the more and less came in with cap and knee, met him in boroughs, cities, villages, gave him their heirs as pages, followed him even at the heels in golden multitudes. He, presently, as greatness knows itself, Stepped me a little higher than his vow, made to my father when his blood was poor upon the naked shore at Ravenspur. And now, forsooth, takes on him to reform some certain edicts and some straight decrees that lie too heavy on the Commonwealth. Cries out upon abuses, seems to weep over his country's wrongs, and by this face, this seeming brow of justice, did he win the hearts of all that he did angle for? <coughs> Proceeded further, cut me off the heads of all the favorites that the absent king in deputation left behind him here while he was personal in the Irish war. Tut, I came not to hear this. That's to the point! In short time after, he deposed the king. Soon after that, deprived him of his life, and in the neck of that, taxed the whole state. To make that worse, he suffered Mortimer. Who is, if every owner were well placed, indeed his king, to be engaged in Wales, there, without ransom, to lie forfeited, disgraced me and my happy victories, so to entrap me by intelligence, rated my uncle from the council board, enraged, dismissed my father from the court, broke oath on oath, committed wrong on wrong, and in conclusion, drove us to seek out this head of safety and withal to pry into his title, the which we find too indirect for long continuance. Shall I return this answer to the king? <laughs> <laughs> Not so, Sir Walter. We'll withdraw a while. Go to the king and let there be upon some surety for a safe return again. And in the morning early shall my uncle bring him our purposes. So farewell. Which would accept a grace and love. And maybe so we shall. Pray God we do. <laughs>